Hello, I'm David Wormsey and I've called this interesting hero sections with background blend modes in Beaver Builder. And this is a template that I've created to go with my Beaver Junction plugin. But the background blend mode is a CSS property that I think has some pretty powerful values that go with it. So here is the CSS, pretty simple stuff. And here are the varieties. And I think it creates some really wonderful effects. And the effects are probably something that most of you will be familiar with, particularly if you've used any kind of graphics editing program, such as Photoshop. So I've shown a few examples here of different blend modes, but there are so many different effects that you can create with this. Many of you will also be aware that there is a CS CSS equivalent. I remember maybe six or seven years ago that this was going to be the big thing. But at the time, I largely ignored it because there wasn't the browser support, because it wasn't supported in Internet Explorer. Presently, the support is about 95% is supported by all of the major modern browsers. And I think that's going to get close to 100% pretty quickly as Internet Explorer dies out. But it's something that I've, I guess I've overlooked for some time because it's not for good reason a setting that is in beaver builder itself but just recently i've been exploring it so i just wanted to mock up a few different examples let me just go over to my dummy site where i've got my plugin installed and if you've got the latest version then you can go to custom rows and drag this in here so we've got the effect on i'm just going to get rid of this this is a bit of something left over from the last video where i was talking about svg separators you can do the same by adding it to HTML if you want to. So you could copy that if you wanted to do it that way. I'm just going to get rid of this image as well. Okay, let's just take a look at this row just to show what's set up. So we have a background image set up. And normally, if I'd set that, that's what I would see. I would see it as you can see it on the thumbnail here. But I've also got on my background color and because with the CSS we're blending these two together we are getting this very different effect so let me just go over to this so I didn't really need a module for this but I just thought it was quite handy to have this information available and what we needed to select this area was to select out the fl dash row dash content dash wrap you will probably want to take this out of here and put it in your main css so you could just put in say hero row over here and then put that sector in before that and remove it but this is here just for some notes here of the different values that are available i'll just mention here that on w3 schools it only mentions these ones here but on mozilla it mentions these extra ones and this, uh, these all work so you can use any of these i've also included this which gives you some idea about how things will blend with these different modes will blend the colors with the images but it really very much depends on the the kind of saturation or the lightness of the color and the images that it's been applied to so you never quite know how things are going to work out but generally these ones will darken the image these will lighten them this will give a contrast and this will do a comparative thing so exclusion and difference will kind of reverse in the image effect that you would have so i'll show you these as i go through the examples um there is something just to note here but it wasn't really working for me maybe it's just my fault but in theory according to Mozilla you can actually combine the values together to create effect but they kind of really wasn't working for me I will just mention one other thing here that what we're using here is the background blend mode there is also mixed blend mode which is used when you wanted to mix other elements that are in the HTML but here this is actually designed to get the background image which is contained within the CSS itself. I was also looking into the idea of combining this with filters as well. So if you're familiar with CSS filters, it does some of the similar things you can get hues with that. You can kind of rotate your image, you can get blur effects, uh, black and white, all of that kind of thing. And I can kind of do that, but I would need to put some kind of pseudo element overlay and I'm not quite sure how that will combine really with uh, things that we're using color overlays as well as I'm going through on this. So I've left that at the moment. There's not really the browser support and there isn't actually a background filter. That isn't a property that's available anyway. So I thought I'd just quickly mention that. I might change on things later. Okay, so uh, 
Before I move on and show some more examples, I will talk a little bit longer about why this has caught my attention and why I've called this really interesting hero sections. Usually that's the problem that I have. It's the, the first thing that someone sees usually on a website or a landing page, it definitely is. But on a home page, which is most visited usually, that's the section that someone sees first as a visitor. And it probably does the most important thing on a site because that's the thing that's got to grab someone's attention. Some people might call it the header section, but generally you need some good copy in there that tells the visitor what's in it for them. There's some value proposition copy that grabs their attention. Most of the time when you're using some kind of image as a background, it needs to support that message or just further give somebody information about what this site is about and kind of, if you like, set the character of the site. Now, the difficulty with things like this is if you've got a client and you ask them to give you an image, well, they need to know a lot to be able to do that well because they need to understand how the subject of their photo was going to be positioned so it's going to work for you as you move to different devices. They need to have some understanding about light and darkness because obviously your text is going to have to be light or dark and then there are going to be points where you might it might make it difficult to read the text and also just generally whatever they're taking a picture of may not quite fit in with the general branding that you've got over a site so it's quite a difficult thing to get an image as well there so even if you can't get anything from your clients if you're left using some stock imagery a lot of that gets used on other sites here you can kind of control the color to match your branding give a flavor for the site and the subject matter and also make stock images look a little bit different to how they are on other sites so i think there are a lot of benefits and that's kind of what's caught my interest okay enough talking let me go and change something so i've set up a few examples nothing stunning here because i didn't have too much time and let me just go and change some of our images so let's just go into this and we'll remove this and we'll select a new image generally i i've talked about this in on on the other videos i have a whole setup for dealing with my images where i usually get them from stencil where i can put them in with the right naming and everything but i've already downloaded some of these let me start with this one which actually i think i used in my last video so this is a, a yoga picture it's you know uh, not anything particularly interesting already it looks quite interesting just dragging it in with the settings that we have so I messed around a little bit with this. Let me just go and pick the color that I used for this. And I'm gonna put this in here. So it's kind of this dark purple. But what I'm gonna do is to go over to here and we're gonna select a different value for this. Now, what did I use for this? I used color dodge. I'm gonna to need to get that from here. Uh, now this creates quite a nice effect there. So it's kind of, <laughs> well, I can't really explain it. It's, it's, it's color dodging and it's, it's made that color very different there. So it's, it's kind of blended in to the main darker areas over here. Now it's a little bit too much across here, but what we can do is we can go and use overlay as well. So, Let's go to our overlay. Now I've been messing around with this. I'm going to use a gradient here. Okay, I've already got one. I'm going to copy the color that I'm using here. Although it might be nice with the lighter color. And I'm going to copy that into there as well. And I'm just going to take the opacity down there. So, yeah, so it kind of creates a nice effect here. I could just move this over to move into there. So that's one fact if I wanted to say yoga classes here, you know, somebody else was using this image, they wouldn't perhaps necessarily connect it because it's very styled over this. Let me go and do another one now. Let's go and change this for this. So mechanic site already, that looks quite nice with the settings that we have, but we'll go for some different colors with this. And let's just go and select um, I'll take this off again and we'll change this to that color 
All right, okay, that's a little bit extreme there. Let's just go over. And what I used for this one was screen. So I'm gonna go into the CSS and I'm gonna swap my color dodge for screen. This should take things down. There we are. Yes, yeah, so that's kind of taken the color off. And that's, now this is a bit too busy, this end. But again, we can go and use the same technique that I was using here to put in a gradient overlay and let's just stick that in. I could probably use the nice blue uh, as a contrasting color to go into there. So, you know, I think that kind of creates an impression somebody who came to a site here when it was about mechanics or something, they would get an impression of what's going on here, but it wouldn't necessarily dominate. Okay, let's do a few, a couple more here, just to show you the range of things. Let's just go and pick, uh, let's have this one, the London here. I'm going to go for, I think I, picked a red with this and we'll use the blend of luminosity so let's go for I'll put this in here I'm not sure if I need to use this actually I'll just put this to none for the moment so that's what that looks like that's not going to quite work with what I want but I'm going to go for if I can find it where's luminosity there we are there. So that kind of brings all the darks in this really strong there. Maybe too strong, but I think it kind of might work. Let's just go to a color gradient that we had. That's kind of better. But of course we can play around a little bit with this. I think maybe if I was to go down and take this to dark there, there we are. It's kind of still get kind of the effect there okay I think we'll just do one more because I'm sure you're probably getting quite bored of this now um, I did let's see something a little bit different we can do here so this is a black and white photo that I'm using you can see it's just already taken on the color we've got with our multiply so it's actually black and white but we can see that coming through let me just go and play around with exclusion this time here. So I'm going to pick in another color and we'll stick that in so it's a kind of lighter blue, uh, less saturated blue that we've got here. And if I go over and exclusion is the one that I want to use. So this is kind of reversing things there. We kind of get that effect there which I kind of like over here and again I'd probably put a little bit of overlay over there and create an effect with that okay I think that's probably covered enough on this it was just a few examples just recently I got excited about being able to use this I think it might just solve some problems about trying to have a, a kind of interest in hero section and I like the idea of being able to combine that with some of the shapes that I was using in the other videos to kind of create something quite modern. Anyway, I hope this video was useful. If it was, then please, as always, give me a thumbs up on YouTube. Consider subscribing to the channel. And if you're feeling really generous, then please share my content with anybody you think it might be of interest to. Hope to see you in another video soon. Bye-bye.